So, hi again. I'm going to talk about external USSD interface. I think uh, you can control plus a bit to, to get the contact. Oh, yeah, yeah, I already did. Yeah, and uh, first thing I'm going to start from is uh, introduction, a little introduction to supplementary services. And uh, supplementary services is uh, another way of communication between subscriber and network, like a calls or SMS messages. And you see there are two types of supplementary services. One is call-related and uh, another is call-independent. And what is USSD? It's um, just a type of call-independent supplementary services, and it stands for unstructured supplementary services data. And uh, similar to SMS, um, uh, it, it's very similar to SMS, but uh, real-time communication is assumed. And um, you, cannot, uh, you cannot store um, your message anywhere. You just need to forward it immediately between two sides of conversation. <clears throat> and usually, the request uh, looks like uh, this way. It's asterisk and uh, some numbers between them. And uh, well-known uh, code is used, still used for years in uh, also OpenBSC and also MSC. And uh, USSD payload is limited to 160 bytes. Um, so you can use any encoding you want. And uh, possible use cases for USSD is um, activation or deactivation of some uh, custom, probably bait network services. It uh, probably could be used for getting some information, for example, account balance or so on. And there is uh, also crazy application of USSD is WAP over USSD, but it, wasn't, it is not used anywhere, I think. And uh, how do we support this uh, USSD in Osmocom? We have uh, Libosmo Core API and uh, it was written by Holger, if I remember correctly. And uh, there is uh, some abstract representation of USSD request uh, and response to. And uh, it has transaction identifier, uh, invoke ID, which uh, allows to um, relate uh, the response to a corresponding request. For example, if a mobile station sends a request to the network, and network would like to know something from subscriber, it will increase the invoke ID and uh, send another request uh, in the response to the initial request of this subscriber. And uh, as soon as subscriber will uh, respond to this request, it will be decreased to zero back. And probably the network will return the result of this operation. Yeah, there is separation code because uh, SS request could be USSD, it could be call related or oh, it, it, it can be USSD or something different. And uh, it also contains USSD payload and data coding scheme. And uh, it's possible to do um, uh, the coding of raw uh, layer 3 message into this structure. And it's also possible to encode uh, USSD messages into raw layer 3 message. And uh, what is going? What I would like to do here in the future is to improve the coding, the coding of call-related uh, supplementary services because it's not implemented in a good way for now. And I would like to implement encoding of mobile-originated uh, USSD messages because it could be also used in a Smacom BB project and somewhere else. And uh, we also. For, for many years, we have this uh, common code in, in order to request your own number in the network. And uh, if uh, the user of this project uh, would like to uh, implement some new codes here, it, uh, has to, he has to uh, modify the source code, recompile this, and he, if the, the network is already working, it would have to restart the network, and it's too complicated. And, not good way. And uh, there is a solution for that. We can implement uh, external USSD interface. And uh, we already have uh, external, external interfaces for SMS, for example. It is SMPP. And we have external interface for voice calls. It's MNCC. But uh, there is no external interface for USSD. 
And the good question was uh, which protocol should we use for that? And uh, specifications uh, recommend to use MAP for that, but uh, there is no uh, stable implementation in Asmacom of MAP protocol. There are some attempts, but uh, not final implementation. And it's uh, uh, working with MAP protocol is pretty uh, complicated for Sometimes it's pretty complicated, yeah. And uh, SMPP could be also used for uses these sessions, but it, uh, it's not session oriented and uh, it's mostly used for SMS. And what about the sub protocol? It uh, stands for generic subscriber update protocol. Uh, it's not standard custom protocol, which was intended in order to keep the protocol complexity out, out of its users. And if, if I'm correct, uh, the current users of this protocol is, uh, are Osmo HLR, MSC, and SGSN. And um, this protocol, the implementation of this protocol also assumes uh, easy conversation uh, from JSAP to MAP. Someday we will have to use MAP. And, uh, why it is good to use this uh, protocol because it's easy to use, easy to extend it, and uh, easy to convert to MAP in the future. But it's, it is also not session uh, uh, oriented. But we can easily extend this, and uh, this is what I did a few weeks before. And the uh, first thing we need is that um, the main problem with, uh, of MAP protocol is that uh, it's a single connection and it's impossible to um, perform. It doesn't uh, provide any existing uh, methods to have uh, sessions, which is required for USSD. And uh, the solution is to emulate a TCAP, because a map uh, usually comes together with TCAP. It is encapsulated in TCAP message. And uh, I would, I'm going to had two uh, information elements. One, of, one is uh, the session state, for example, we begin or finish session, and another is a unique, unique identificator of session. And uh, for example, if uh, uh, USSD gateway would like to start communication with subscriber, it uh, has to request an uh, unused session ID, and only then it will be able to begin session and uh, start some USSD notifications or requests. And uh, for also for session management, I'm going to introduce uh, a new message and uh, three types of this message, request, uh, request result, and error. And uh, also, it's required to add support for USSD payload uh, in order to be able to transfer USSD payload using GSUB protocol, GSUB messages. And for this, uh, there are a group of messages, USSD-related messages for now. Uh, yes, and uh, there, there are some information elements which is uh, um, stated by a map specification as man mandatory to have in some messages. For example, uh, USSD string data coding scheme because it's, uh, the actual USSD payload can, can be in any language you know, supported by JSM. And uh, this is uh, the representation. This is the diagram of communication between subscriber and uh, USSD gateway. And uh, for example, when my mobile station sends a request to the network, it uh, c comes through the base station subsystem to the MSC, and the <coughs> MSC is exactly the place where all the magic happens because we need to perform some basic transcoding between uh, the message which we just received from subscriber and we need to uh, create a message which we are going to forward to USSD gateway. And uh, here is a little discussion, uh, should we perform uh, all the operations with USSD gateway through the HLR or should we also have possibility to connect to MSC directly from USSD gateway? But I think for now the simplest uh, solution would be to forward uh, every operation through HLR. It could be discussed later, I think. 
And uh, this is how different messengers on different, at different stages uh, of uh, forwarding look like. And uh, for example, in the bottom, you see the message coming from a mobile station. And uh, this is what we receive at the mobile switching center. And uh, we need to perform uh, decoding of this message according to, uh, according to the 0480 uh, specifications. And uh, then we can convert it uh, to uh, GSAP, and uh, then we can convert GSAP to MAP or wherever you want, it's JSON or so on, SIP, for example. And uh, there is a question why MSC should uh, parse uh, USSD request or SS request. And uh, first of all, we need to know uh, what is this message. Uh, are we going to start a new session, or are, are we going to finish session, or is it just uh, some message within session, or so on? And we, we need to know the operation code, because uh, supplementary services is not about USSD. There is also a few types of different uh, operation codes. And uh, we also need to know the data coding scheme used uh, by request from subscriber or by the response from subscriber. And uh, finally, we need uh, the USSD payload itself. Here you can see the example of uh, communication between uh, mobile station and USSD gateway. I don't put uh, HLR here, but uh, you can imagine that it is between MSC and USSD gateway. And uh, for example, uh, yeah, mobile station first uh, sends a register type of message, and the operation code is process USSD request. It arrives to mobile switching center, and here we need to convert it to corresponding GSAP message, which is a process USSD request, uh, request subtype of this message. And we, using this session, we begin. Uh, using this message, we begin the session between uh, subscriber and USSD gateway. Then uh, the network, for example, might request some additional data, and it will increase the invo invoke ID, because, for example, it cannot uh, respond to the uh, response immediately, and it needs some additional data from subscriber. For example, uh, type 1 for to choose uh, some point of menu. And then subscriber responds to this uh, request, and finally network might uh, finish. Or wherever network, wherever mobile station may uh, finish the conversation in any time. And here is some little example of uh, network originated uh, USSD, for example, request or notification. First of all, as I already told, uh, we need to request session ID, uh, which is unused at the moment. And uh, as soon as we get the session ID, we can begin the session and, for example, uh, request something from subscriber. Then uh, on the radio access network, uh, you will see paging request. Uh, subscriber should uh, respond to this paging request. And now and then she will, he will get a, a register message with uh, initial request from USSD gateway, and then he can respond and continue this conversation until uh, uh, any of both sides will decide to finish session. And uh, what's already done here is that uh, we managed to um, correct uh, Libosmo Core uh, API implementation. Uh, this is only a few points which was implemented or corrected. For example, in release complete, uh, there is an uh, optional facility message and uh, yeah, we also had a big problem that uh, the API of Libosmo Core uh, was always trying to decode uh, the payload using seven default seven bit uh, alphabet, <coughs> and this is not good in case of uh, different language used. And yeah, we decided to add a new fields and the abstract representation of USSD request. And uh, what I'm currently working on is uh, MSC code in order to allow multiple uh, transactions uh, and just uh, message uh, coding because we we didn't have this because we only had uh, our number only one our number request uh, and uh, we can uh, just respond and finish the uh, release the communication immediately and uh, what is uh, what I'm going to do is uh, 
to implement some test cases, TTCN test cases, and also there is an idea to implement counters for UCSD events. For example, the total number of UCSD requests, uh, number of active uh, SS connections for UCSD, UCSD connections, and uh, number of uh, rejected or successful UCSD connections. And yeah, thanks for your attention. If you have any questions, feel free to ask me. And this is some specifications you can read to get some background about this topic. That's it. No questions? Do we have questions? Yeah, Keith? Um, so I'm thinking about the, the USSD gateway itself, which maybe it's not part of what you're dealing with, but so if you, if you think about the problem that you said that the average user would have to modify the USSDC source code and recompile and restart and everything. Oh, yes. But this gets us to the case where now if I wanted to implement some service like pull some in information from the internet or something, scrape some site and send something back, how would, would I then have to... I mean, how are you, do you have any ideas on how the USSD gateway part of it will work? Because it needs to talk GSUP to yes, but the uh, MSC, right? So we need some GSUP to whatever, something that's easy to program. Yeah, we need some interface from Osmo HLR to, I don't know, it can be a map interface or it can be something different or uh, we can implement map interface uh, between uh, Osmo HLR and some con converter to wherever you want. And then uh, any commercial USSD gateway allows you to create uh, any USSD menus and codes in some graphical interface and it should work. Uh, basically, the, the, the original idea was that uh, um, uh, GSUP is not a difficult protocol to implement and, uh, you know, resolve it all, apparently, you know, obviously there is implementation in C, right, and then uh, you could uh, either use this C implementation to convert into something easier to process like SIP, and then, uh, you know, with SIP you can do whatever, right? Um, or you can do like you no know, routing. You can route to different application servers, and then each application server would handle its specific, um, you know, its specific request, and you know whatever is whatever you want, right? It's uh, all available tool sets in open source. It's very easy. Uh, or uh, you could write a JSOP implementation in some uh, scripting language. Oh yeah, so Harold says as there is already a Python implementation. Uh, we have well, we st we started an Erlang implementation. I don't think it's finished, uh, but we plan to at some point finish Erlang implementation. And uh, look, you, you can with Erlang implementation you could also use Elixir, which is a friendly, uh, I'll say, uh, more user friendly version of Erlang, or more newbie friendly version of Erlang. Um, so. Yeah, I mean, there will be multiple ways to do this. Either convert into a protocol for which you already have tools or to write in some scripting language. That was the original idea. And then after that, I mean, yeah, whatever, whatever you want. Yeah, so my idea would be that in the HLR you then basically configure routes like you have your SMPP routes for, for, for SMS uh, in, in Osmo MSC or Osmo NITP. That basically in Osmo HLR you can say, well, this uh, particular um, SMPP request, whatever, star hash 250 hash or whatever, that this gets routed to a certain external program and then this external program again uh, can, as, as uh, we discussed, can, have, can use GSUP at least for now. I mean, there is no standard protocol for uh, GPRS, uh, sorry, for, for, for USSD. Um, uh, so it's, I mean, in the end it doesn't really matter what we choose, but uh, I think rather than inventing yet another new protocol that nobody else uses, we can just as well stick with GSUP. 
um, until somebody uh, works on something else. But as I said, with, with SMPP it was easy because there is a, a specified protocol. Yes, it has all kinds of weirdness and, and, and problems itself, but it is something that not only Osmocom implements, but for USSD there really is no uh, standard or non-standard interface uh, or protocol. And the only protocol or interface that I'm aware of that exists in open source is what uh, Mobisense is using. They have some XML RPC API from their HLR. Uh, for IMS maybe, okay, yeah. Hmm. Okay, sorry, that we, had, we don't have this on the recording. So there is a, a spec in, in, uh, in, apparently in IMS there is a, a specification on how uh, USSD can be passed to external applications. Okay, over HTTP. Yeah, um, I, I feel like an echo here. So <laughs> <laughs> any other comments or feedback or questions? Um, is, is that... Is that part about which one going through the HLR? Is that decided now, or because the no, you it's had a still under discussion? And I, uh, so, what is the? Uh, I mean, what's what's the benefit of? Is there a benefit to doing it that way, or would it be better that if the USSD gateway in itself needed to talk to the HLR, that it would do that? I rather than having the HLR as the principal. I think one advantage of having uh, all requests. Uh, going through HLR is that the USSD gateway don't need to care uh, where particular subscriber is and uh, connect to different, different mobile switching centers. It can have only a single connection with HLR and communicate with... Uh, you, you may have uh, multiple mobile switching centers now and they are all would be connected to HLR and that's simpler. <laughs> Um, and the, the other point is, uh, if you somebody wants to have a map gateway, then uh, this is uh, the logical um, uh, approach, because in, in the GSM spec, it's specified that USSD ends up at the HLR. Um, so if we have it in the same GSUB connection, then basically instead of Osmo HLR, you can have them the map gateway, uh, which then translates it to map, um, and uh, you don't have any, like, logic or architecture mismatch uh, at that point. We always try to keep these up as uh, convertible as possible. I mean, we don't have a, a, a good converter yet. I mean, Holger wrote a small talk, uh, a map to GSUB converter for GPRS uh, some years ago, but we don't have a, a maintained active um, universal translator yet. But uh, I mean, I think it may happen sooner or later, uh, depending on, on user requests. But uh, another question from my side is, uh, should we still keep this uh, number request feature of OpenBC and uh, Osmo, BTA, Osmo BC? Sorry, uh, I didn't get the question. The question is, uh, should we still keep the feature of possibility to request your own number in Osmo MSC? I, I wasn't correct. No, not in Osmo MSC. If at all, that needs to move to the HLR. So I don't think the MSC should do anything with USSD. It just forwards it over GSUB. And then any, uh, any handler, including the star hash 100 handler, would either have to be inside the HLR, which in this case actually makes sense because the HLR knows what that number is, um, uh, or basically handled uh, to an external application uh, that connects to the HLR. Yeah, but... Uh there was a discussion about having a local or remote policy of uh, USSD connections and probably this is not the only one uh, USSD code uh, the uh, one would uh, like to handle inside HLR. Probably we can uh, implement some capability to change this code. For example, we might define some services like get your own number, get your own uh, IMC, TMC, for example, and uh, let the user yeah, <laughs> for developers it's perfect, yeah. <laughs> Get your own, uh, yeah, anyway. Um, <laughs> no, I, I think, it, yes, you can implement all those things, but they all belong at the HLR. It has no, I mean, the fact that we implemented this in, in MSE is because we implemented it in NITB, because we implemented everything in NITB. <laughs> 
But yeah. now I think there's no reason why this should be handled at the MSC level. And as you said, you can have multiple MSCs. So then every MSC needs to have the same configuration with the same such services. Otherwise, it's, it's going to be uh, uh, complicated. And the other point is, if you think about roaming scenarios, even, let's say, only roaming within GSUB between multiple networks, um, then also you want to have those services at the home uh, uh, HLR of the subscriber and not at the visited MSC of whatever mm -hmm. network he's currently visiting. So I think um, I don't see why the MSC would keep such functionality. I think it's important to keep uh, USSD, all USSD functions outside of MSC and HLR for one simple reason, uh, for uh, internationalization reasons, or for translation reasons. I mean, we don't want to have, uh, you know, all kinds of, uh, you know, translations and IE 18N uh, in uh, Osmo HLR, and, you know, we don't want to all this stuff in there, so it should be external just for, for this simple reason. Yeah, this is why we only extract the actual raw USSD payload and specify its data coding scheme. And yeah. unlike the previous version of IPA, we don't uh, try to decode it using default JSM alphabet anymore. We keep it for compatibility reasons, but uh, we also have these raw bytes. Yeah, I mean, that's, that's it. So basically, Osmo, from my perspective, Osmo HLR should be just a, a router of uh, those connections, that's it. And what do you think about uh, a way, the way how to configure this routing via VTI or some configuration files? Yeah, I mean, Harold probably have a better idea, but uh, <laughs> some VTI, the same like we are doing for uh, SMS, or for, yeah, for, for SMPP, I guess, for like prefixes. So this prefix goes to this direction, this prefix goes to that direction. I think there is a, or, or yeah, default default route obviously, and you know prefixes, and then I think there is already some boilerplate code for this uh, because it's already already used for. The other approach to do this would be to have the uh, the external application register for a given uh, USSD code. So not have a, a config file that where you have a table of all the USSD codes and point to certain applications but rather have a dynamic registration. So you basically, when, when the external application connects, says, well, I register myself for this prefix, um, which is a bit like we do with point code registration in the STP. Um, it sort of requires you to have less configuration, but then it makes it more difficult because you don't have a central routing table anymore. And if two applications request the same code, what do you do at that point? So it becomes a bit difficult, but it has advantages and disadvantages. Any other comments? Thanks. No. One more. I like. Uh, just a quick follow up on that. So, if if you have if you do have an interface where applications or handlers can register, then there are essentially two modes or or like two things that can happen if two applications want to register for the same USSD. Either they get they both get to do to act on this, or there's a race, and whoever wins yeah, we gets, can introduce gets it. some kind of priority. Who made this first? <laughs> One further thing is, is it's related. I think what a, this um, standard call forwarding and voicemail forwarding and stuff that even some some user equipment. At, at MC attach time, uh, always asks the status of these things anyway. Um, where, if that were to be implemented in the HLR, right? So, but then I guess if you are handling calls, routing with some PBX or something, you just, just need to. We have some limitations at the moment that we only handle USSD related supplementary services, but uh, not. But it, it could be modified. But uh, it also requires modifying of Libosmo Core IPA, IP, which is a bit painful. Yeah. So <laughs> what, what you've referred to, uh, like the call forwarding and, and that conditional call forwarding, unconditional call forwarding, and so on, that's a supplementary, a structured supplementary service. So that's yeah. just an SS, not a USSD. 
Um, it sort of looks a little bit like similar on the radio interface, but uh, uh, it also, like according to spec, I think it also goes to the HLR, and then these settings are actually stored in the HLR according to spec, um, like w what kind of forwarding or what kind of configuration you have. Um, and then uh, one would have to, in order to integrate with PBXs, basically an external PBX would have to query that somehow in the HLR. Yeah. Okay, thanks Vadim. I think uh, we can move on to the next speaker then. Thanks.